Uh, this is Dr. Simha Chillam, uh, working as an assistant professor at uh, NIRDPR, National Institute of Rural Development, Panchayati Ras. Uh, NIRC Center, located here only in Gauhati, uh, adjacent to this particular center. And here today we will be discussing, uh, there are four units under course three on special special analysis and applications in geoinformatics. The, in these four units, we have first unit as uh, geoprocessing functions and the tools, which can be seen uh, the, as a unit. And the four units are very important for geoinformatics as its analytical tools. The one is the map making, data generation, formulation, then editing. After that, finally, the data, special data, which through analysis only it will be utilized in various applications in geoinformatics. Like any applications, maybe you plan for infrastructure, you may plan for natural resource management, you plan for various things, but the application, the analysis of special tools are very important. Different analysis, analytical methods, analysis procedures we have in special analysis. So let us see under this geoprocessing functions which we have and tools which we have under this uh, unit 3. It's uh, under unit 3, geoprocessing functions and tools. As I said, there are many functions and tools we have under this geoprocessing which is very, very important one. Let us see the functions and tools which we have under this geoinformatics. The first and foremost function is vector overlay analysis. I think by this time you are all aware what is the vector, what is the raster, right? The vector where we have point line polygon, all your <coughs> geographical data, spatial data will be demarcated. The entities, the geographical features, Entities will be demarcated using point, line, polygon, using x, y coordinates, right, through this vector format. When you come to the vector overlay, it's like a uh, geometry which will have point, line, polygon and their associated attributes will be overlaid operations create a new geometry and a new output geospatial data set. Like almost it's a common overlay or union or intersection. These three are looking different but it's almost same like one upon another the one suppose you have the road layer then you have the building layer we call layer in uh, geospatial tools you know no? one upon another if you overlay it put it as a mappable form it's come overlay but when you overlay it one upon another you can also create a combined all this different thematic data into a common or single data set or single map form this vector overlay analysis which we have basically it's in a point on polygon overlay jab karenge when the overlay happen in the vector layer no point on line point on polygon line on polygon polygon on polygon but never happen the analysis like polygon on point line on on point ulta nahi ho sakte kyunki point is the small entity which have single coordinate right one x and one y if you see, this is the point, this is the line, this is the polygon. For example, you can overlay point on polygon, point on line, point on uh, line on polygon, line on line, point on point. But ulta nayo sakta hai, polygon cannot be on point, polygon cannot be on line. So that your things will not be visible if you overlay in reverse mode, right? That's what uh, the slide is um, indicating. When you go for vector uh, vector uh, overlay, point on line, polygon on polygon, line on polygon. You can see here uh, how the overlay technique used to happen. Point, line, polygon, right? So, <coughs> yeah, I think the diagram is not correct, but you can see in the picture, point in polygon overlay. So all points are overlaid on polygon map and hence point polygon in the new data layer is a new attribute of polygon for each point. Why? Because point is a small entity which has single x, y. It will be on overlay and polygon. The attributes will be joined together into the polygon feature which is the large one. You can see here how the overlay is to happen line on polygon, polygon on polygon again. You see this is the polygon, this is the polygon. When you overlay, you use the overlay technique. Polygon and polygon, if you see the attributes also, it comes as a polygon feature only. Right? So, this way you have the overlay techniques. Uh, three uh, three uh, entities like point line polygon, how overlay technique can be done as analysis. 
Then second one is raster analysis. The raster analysis is little different than your vector analysis. Your vector analysis directly geographical features of point line polygon will be overlaid one upon another. But whereas raster analysis is overlay analysis different, it's a pixel based one. If you see here, the raster with more than two layers is easier than overlay of vector data because it does not include any topological operations, right? And then it's also local operations like uh, the based on the value of the pixel, it will be overlaid. For example, we have the land use land cover map, different times it is raster data, right? So wherever the same pixel value is enabled, here cropland, here cropland, that will be mixed together in the raster format. Let us see. Then we have uh, another tool for the spatial analysis is spatial buffering. I think this buffer we have already discussed uh, earlier one. Spatial buffer means the area of extent. If the point is there and uh, you can make it a two kilometers from this point which I am going to establish. What are all other features we have will be known through this buffer tool. If I am going to start one ATM over here, is there any ATM centers within 2 km radius from this point where I am planning? That will be known through this buffer tool. So along with this point, not only point, this buffer can be done line also. If you have the line, drainage canal, new drainage canal you are giving. So what is the extent of area will cover within 500 meters? So how much land covered, wasteland covers, where you can convert into agricultural land? How much fallow you have, where you convert into agricultural land while providing this drainage system. For this, you can see the buffer analysis, right? The many cases, this buffer analysis is very important because when you plan for any infrastructure facility or other facilities, right, amenities in the villages, this buffer function is very, very uh, essential to run this. Knowing what are all available, knowing what are all not available, knowing where it is, how much distance and then we will be knowing only accessibility through this buffer function. The accessibility of the facilities which you have geographically. For example, I am putting here one drinking water scheme. So how much far it is from the settlements, hamlets, is it accessible to the villages to get the water? If yes, how far it is? If I am putting Anganwadi center, how far it is? Is it accessible which I am proposing the location is suitable? Through this buffer tool, one can run the same. You can see in the picture which we have given point, line, polygon, all these three things we can do the buffer as a spatial analysis. Right, which is very important, friends. In fact, buffer tool uh, along with other union or you have um, intersection, but buffer is very important in many cases, not only for planning and also to monitor what are all available within your geographical area will be known with this buffer tool only. Right, yeah, and then we have another tool that is union and intersection, which are important again. You can see as picture is indicating the union is an analytical process in which the features from two or more map layers are combined into a single composite layer, right? You, you can see picture there are two different thematic layers, right? Different thematic layers, maybe fallow land and agriculture land, different maps are being done or only agriculture land and water resources. When you have two different layers to the adjacent area, I want to make it single for example. Fellow agriculture land I want to show as a single map then we use union and the final output will be like this two polygon combined together right combined together all the adjacent with the, with the adjacent place as a combined feature is called union and you will also having all attributes together in that particular new map which you have and also we have intersection Intersection means the one geographical data map will be there, thematic data, the another thematic data. Is there. Both where it is matching, that should be that will be separated. You can see this is the intersection, the red which you are seeing. Right? For example, we have the drainage canal. Right? So my drainage canal is covering in my area only this much portion where I am getting irrigated, irrigated agricultural land. So I want to see how much irrigated land from that X drainage canal. In this case, we use intersection. Right? The how much land in my geographical area the drainage system is entering, the stream is entering, where I am getting irrigated facility, irrigation facility. 
that you can extract using this intersection option right the one is union second one is intersection okay there are two different tools being given and these two also used for planning or even monitoring also where when what geographically if you want to say the union intersection both can be used then we have a special autocorrelation and it's, it's used basically rarely and special autocorrelation also one of the major tool where GIS helps understand the degree in which one object similar than other is nearby object in your geographical area we have a canal so what are all other similar features we have in your geographical area study area that will be known will be um, demarcated using the special autocorrelation the similar feature which are all adjacent area is available that can be taken from this then we have weighted regression this is also another statistical uh, technique you say where you can use the unless special non special when the input variable difference from location to location from this formation the the weighted regression model you can give the different weightages to the different locations for example we have three different components under land use land cover right agriculture crop land having weight is more fallow land having less right irrigated area having medium such a way you can give the weightages for different analysis purpose in special tools this basically we use for raster analysis where when you go for any uh, i mean uh, planning tool when you go for run this like a uh, drainage or to know the suitable locations we used to give this weighted or weightage regression 